Hey, what's up guys? Hope your week is going well. Uh, last week I put up a tutorial on taking a skull and peeling it away with cloth. Well, after I put up that tutorial, I got a bunch of nasty emails and nasty comments. Let me read one for you. I was really excited to follow this tutorial until I realized that you actually never go into how you can create the effect. Well, I can't handle the anger and the hatred anymore, so I'm just going to go over um, all the settings that I use for this. Um, before I get started, I want to show you a really cool thing I found on Vimeo. This is a really cool cloth tearing effect, uh, showing an old couch and then tearing it across to reveal the new one. So we're going to do an effect sort of similar to that, um, which will be really cool. So let's jump into cinema and get started. All right, so we're going to take a piece of text and we're going to peel it away. Uh, we have a new trailer text pack, which is why we're doing text, because I have to promote it in order to feed my family. Uh, so we're just going to pick the simple one. So this is our simple metal uh, text. It's very basic, but it has some great textures and lighting on it. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use uh, one of the letters. So that'll be a little bit faster uh, for the tutorial. All right, let's change our mode from uh, garage to garage shading. And the first thing you need to know when you're going to tear cloth is that you need a lot of subdivisions. And you can see that this guy does not have very many. So we're gonna have to go into our text and add a bunch of subdivisions. And there's two ways that we're gonna do that. The first part is on the caps. So on the caps, we're gonna change it from n-gons to um, quadrangles, I guess. And we're gonna check on regular grid. And then we're gonna mess around with the width so that we get some nice subdivision, something like that. And then you can also see that on the sides, we don't have very much subdivision. That's actually on the object and under this intermediate points, we could change that to uniform or something like that. And we'll add a few more subdivisions in there. So that's looking good. We'll just kind of rough it out and add some geometry. And now we need to make this editable. So we have this handy little script called Edit Optimize, um, which takes text and will in one click make it editable. So if I take this text and I hit C, we have all these different folders and nulls and we have to go back into here and we have to hit C again and then we have to go in and mess around with the rounding and select all of them and go to objects, connect objects and delete and then drag it out. So that whole step takes uh, quite a few clicks. So instead of that, we're gonna use this little script which is literally one click and all of that is done. And you still have the original uh, which is automatically hidden. This is a free script which you can get at the Pixel Lab, so uh, I'll include a link to that. All right, so we have our editable M. So now we can start adding the cloth stuff. So we're going to right click, go to uh, simulation and cloth. And right away, we're going to see this thing drop. We need to go to our forces and turn off gravity. And now just like in the previous tutorial I showed you, we're going to use one of these particle effectors uh, to mess around with the cloth. Um, you can use wind, turbulence, uh, I think we used the attractor last time, you can use a bunch of these. So we have our attractor, and then we're going to add fall off so that we can control what part of our object this is going to affect. So we're going to do linear this time. It looks like it's backwards, so we have to rotate it around. Rotate that guy 90 degrees, and there we go. So we got our fall off. All right, so now if we hit play, nothing's gonna happen. Um, we need to go to our cloth tag and go to the expert tab, and we have this include slot, and we have to drag that attractor into it so that it'll affect it. And now if we hit play, you can see that everything is getting sucked into the middle. That's because our attractor is sucking it in. Um, we can just reverse that and do minus 10, and then it's gonna push it out from the center. So now we're getting a really cool effect. Okay, so here's, let's increase the frames actually. So here's when we need this to tear. Um, and this is when some people started getting mad at me because I didn't explain this fully. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the tag and we're gonna go to um, the tag tab and we have this little slot called use tear. And we're gonna click that on. And now if we do this, uh, you're gonna start getting some sort of janky artifacting. And let's actually mess around with the tear settings a little bit. So if we mess around with these guys till we get something a little hectic. So we're starting to get a little bit more crazy. Getting those polygons shooting out, which is very strange and looks terrible. Um, but that's actually what we want. 
So let's just try this for now. So the reason that um, it's not looking good is that we need to put this text inside of a simulate cloth cloth surface. So if we drag the text into there, now we can start to see the final result. So it's still looking a little janky. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play with our tear a little bit more until we get it to the point where it, the uh, the force is strong enough to actually rip the cloth. That's what this, uh, this tear uh, percentage is. It's at what point when the, the uh, polygons are stretched away from each other, will they rip and separate from each other? So this uh, percentage is very important. It will change everything about your animation. So if we drop it down a little bit, you can see that it kind of breaks at that point. So you just have to find that sweet spot where uh, we're ripping off the little pieces. So that's looking really good. And from here, all we have to do is take that attractor and move it off to the side, make a keyframe, go to... I don't know, 80 frames and have it pass through. Make another keyframe and we'll see what that looks like. So this is actually a really cool way to do something like a bullet tear, a bullet uh, kind of passing through an object. You know, you always see those, those shots of the bullet passing through like an apple and it's exploding or through cloth. Um, really, that's about it. You just need to uh, follow this setup and then you need to mess around with this tear percentage till you get it correct. And don't forget to put it in a cloth surface because if we turn that off, this is what you're going to get and it's going to be pretty confusing. So you get that kind of really strange polygon stuff. Just put this guy in a cloth surface and it's going to be very beautiful. All right, I think that's it. That should explain the setup pretty easily for you guys and give you some fun stuff to play with. Um, so hopefully you can stop filling my inbox with hatred now. All right, enjoy the rest of your week. We'll talk to you next time.